What's up, YouTube? I've got a question for you. What comes to mind when I say Dyson? Dyson vacuum. A vacuum. The vacuum? Yeah, is that the vacuum? Dyson? Vacuum cleaner? Dyson? Quality. Dyson is much more than a company that just makes vacuums. In the three or so decades it's been around, Dyson has made incredible strides as a disruptive and innovative technology company. I partnered with Dyson on this video and got an exclusive look inside their R&D facilities in England. I spoke extensively with James Dyson's son, Jake, as well as 19-year Dyson veteran, Paul Dawson. I learned firsthand why Dyson is a formidable and forward-thinking low-key powerhouse in the landscape of tech companies out there today. Let's start with a quick history lesson. In 1978, James Dyson was fed up with traditional vacuums, the one that had bags and their loss of suction. He took it upon himself to fix this problem and attempted something that no one else had. After five years of failure after failure after failure, James had done the impossible. I invented the first bagless vacuum cleaner. It wasn't easy. In fact, it took me 5,127 prototypes, 5,126 failures, to get it right. And get it right he did. He first licensed his technology in Japan, and then he took the money that he made to launch his own company, Dyson. Fast forward more than three decades of relentless innovation and again, countless failures. The failure is the starting point because when something fails, you understand why it fails. And then you start to think of ideas as to, as to ways you can overcome that failure. Dyson has entered into and dominated established markets with products it had no previous experience manufacturing. We did a hairdryer, didn't we? That's Jake Dyson, James's son chief engineer at the company. There are very established companies at that, but, yeah. but we recognized uh, how, how much more could be improved in a hairdryer and set about doing that. It's no different than any other product we do. Today, Dyson is a privately owned billion dollar company that prides itself on innovation, design, and quality. Dyson's product lineup includes Among Vacuums, a hair dryer, a hair styler, a plethora of air treatment products like purifiers and humidifiers, bladeless fans, and even lighting. A bit more on this stuff later in the video. But Dyson is not stopping here. In fact, they're taking on yet another well-established product category with quite a saturated market, electric cars. Yes, you heard me correctly. Dyson is making electric vehicles. And if history is any indicator, they should be incredible from a design and performance perspective. And yes, it'll probably be expensive. We'll talk about this project later in the video as well. Here are some facts about Dyson in 2019. The company employs roughly 16,000 people, nearly 6,000 of which are engineers. Almost half of the humans that work at Dyson are engineers. Let that sink in for a second. And Dyson is no stranger when it comes to the assembly line. They manufacture 80,000 products a day, meaning packaged and ready to ship to retailers. Dyson continues to invent and reinvent itself and its products with the goal of being the best while improving human lives. We recognize the problem. We find the best way to solve it, uh, make it the most efficient, the most reliable, and the best performing product on the market. That's, 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 our, that's, our, that's our aim. Even though Dyson's been around for decades, it feels like a startup because of its disruptive nature. I heard this firsthand from Jake. But it's a startup in many ways. You know, we innovate in retail, we have our own demo stores. The way we, we market things, are our commercial strategy and the innovation and development of our products and manufacturing. So it's not just the design of a product, it's all throughout the entire business. We want to keep challenging it. Paul Dawson, VP of Health and Beauty at Dyson, said something similar. Yeah, it's a great place to work. Um, it's, it's one of those places where you know, we, we try and do the impossible every day, and that's quite exciting. <laughs> you may have noticed the cross-section of the Mini Cooper behind us. It's one of many design icons that Dyson has on display throughout its campus. These inventions, like the Harrier Jump Jet and Whittle Engine, are there to inspire its employees. Dyson recently announced its plans to relocate its HQ to Singapore, but its creative slash RDD hub, where I went, is about two hours west of London in a town called Malmesbury and sprawls out over 67 acres. Most of the buildings I saw are made of glass. And one in particular dubbed D9 caught my eye because it was completely reflective, as in Dyson doesn't want even its own employees that don't have access to see what's inside. 
And no, I wasn't able to go in there, but I was curious and was told that secret projects are worked on in there. Dyson's buildings are cleverly lined with huge pictures of its products, visual testaments to the staff's capability of inventing. I learned that Dyson has its own engineering school, right on campus. But I've been going to every Secretary of State for higher education, saying there aren't enough engineers, there aren't enough engineers. So finally I went to Joe Johnson and said there aren't enough engineers. And he said, well, do your own university. It took me about 30 seconds to say, yes, I will, because I saw immediately that's what we should do. There are currently close to 100 engineering students that live, work, and learn at Dyson. That is really cool. Aside from the pretty buildings, I got an exclusive, expansive tour of various research facilities on campus. Dyson does an unbelievable amount of testing and studies while developing each of its products. For example, for its hair care products, Dyson uses a variety of real human hair samples to test on. Engineers also routinely study single strands of human hair using this stress testing machine, something I didn't even know existed. They've got rooms full of million dollar 3D printers for rapidly prototyping parts for new products. There's a completely soundproof room where Dyson gets a really good feel for how much noise its products create. Being in there was trippy. I went inside Dyson's electromagnetic compatibility facility where they work with and study electromagnetic waves instead of acoustic waves. And the walls are lined with these styrofoam shapes to get a clean read of waves from the products. And of course, they've got rooms dedicated to testing their vacuums with a multitude of carpet and floor types. And speaking of vacuums, Dyson just recently announced three new products, one of which is in fact a new vacuum, the V11. It's got an LCD that tells you which mode you're in and will display how much runtime you have remaining second by second. The V11 has 20% more suction power than the previous model, and this new version has a dynamic sensing mode that'll adjust the suction power based on the floor it's on. Then there's the Pure Cool Me, a cooler and purifier that's small enough to fit on a desk or bedside table. You saw it at the very beginning of this video. It's got 10 speeds, the dome up top slides up and down to adjust the direction of the air vortex, and the thing oscillates. And then there's my favorite of the three, Dyson's Light Cycle. I don't think I've ever seen a light packed with so much tech with such a unique design. The light cycle can automatically mimic the color temperature of the sun as it passes through the sky, which is meant to help boost our circadian rhythms. It's got capacitive sensors up top for manually adjusting brightness and color temperature. And yes, there's a companion iPhone app so you can do this remotely. But what I like most about the light cycle is how easy it is to adjust along its axes. I literally move this thing with my pinky. And you can't really tell from this video, but it distributes light unbelievably well. And to think so many people associate Dyson with vacuums, but they've since moved far beyond just one product. I asked both Jake and Paul what kind of company Dyson is in 2019. It's, it's really different depending on, on your viewpoint. I would, mm. I would really like us to be uh, you know, uh, seen as a technology company, but also a health and well-being company. And you know, I, I want to be able to make that link between technology and actually what it does for you as a consumer. You have a lot of people talking about technology. You have a lot of monitors and various sensors that people are wearing now. I want to be able to be the, the, the company that said, right, we've got this great product that you hopefully will see the benefit for and that we are doing all of our homework inside the consumer's home and really understanding your needs to try and make your life better. I have to say we're an innovation company okay. and a creative engineering company where we like taking risks. Um, we like going into the unknown, um, we're not afraid to do so, and we experiment to innovate. Um, we don't replicate and improve, we experiment, and I think that's key. So upholding the DNA of what Dyson was and still is, Dyson is no longer vacuum cleaners. Okay. Uh, we make robotic vacuum cleaners, we make hair dryers, we make yeah, hair stylers, we make purifiers, we do lighting, you know, we're doing electric vehicles. And speaking of that EV, here's what we know so far. Sir James Dyson plans to invest over 2 billion pounds into this endeavor, 200 million of which they've already spent purchasing a former World War II airfield, hangars and all. 
that they're converting into an R&D center in Halavington. James began the project in 2015 and aims to have its first production units on the market sometime in 2021, with an unveiling possibly sometime next year. Dyson has hired notable automotive bigwigs to help make this idea a reality, like former Infinity President Roland Kruger and 22-year Aston Martin veteran David Wire, to name a couple. You may be asking yourself, what business does Dyson have getting into the car market, specifically electric cars? Will they be self-driving? What will they look like? Why does Dyson think they can do this? Going up against big players, the industry isn't a barrier to us doing a project. It only, in fact, it feeds us more. Um, and we're not, we're not afraid at all and never have been. It's going to be a really disruptive you know, entrance into uh, an existing category that is just ripe for disruption. And I think we've got some amazing technologies uh, you know, such as an understanding of electric motors, an understanding of uh, airflow and, and everything else, and, and batteries, the way we're developing our own uh, battery technology. I think yeah. all of that in, 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 into one car package is going to disrupt that market. It's important to emphasize that Dyson takes its time with its inventions and will only bring something to market when it's ready. The majority of the electric car market uses lithium ion cells for its batteries and Dyson may be taking a different approach. In 2015, Dyson acquired a solid state battery company called Sock T3 to help bolster its efforts in developing new battery technology. I pushed for more information while I was on campus, but both Jake and Paul were tight-lipped about the project, naturally. So we'll have to wait and see what Dyson unveils and eventually brings to market. It's not every day that a company like Dyson makes a hard pivot into this type of product category. And not to mention cars are very difficult to manufacture if the proper infrastructure isn't there. I'll be keeping a close eye on this project. It'll be interesting to see how the company positions itself and what information they provide to the public as we approach 2020, 2021, and the future. Yeah, Dyson's got a lot to prove, but something tells me that they're gonna pull this off. Dyson has a respectable track record when it comes to entering new markets, so only time will tell. I think it's fair to say that Dyson is much more than a company that just makes vacuums. They're the sleeping giant of technology companies, and I am psyched for them to continue down the invention road they've paved for themselves, pun intended. I learned so much about Dyson's inner workings while making this video, and one of the things that surprised me the most was how much James himself values failure. Most of us associate failure with negativity, and James's company is literally predicated on failing over 5,000 times over the course of five years to get one thing right. Persistence, ladies and gentlemen, is key. I'll leave you with some words of wisdom from Sir James Dyson himself. Thank you for watching. When you're going through hell, when things really aren't working, that's the really interesting point, because that's probably where a lot of other people give up. And uh, so if you battle through that, uh, if you get most excited at that point, then you, you know, you'll probably make a breakthrough. And often it's surprisingly quick. Uh, you know, people give up at the very moment when they would have broken through and made a success. And innovation, that, that is really what is at the heart of innovation. Because if it was easy and all you had to do was go through the process uh, and get there without too much difficulty, without too many brick walls in your way, everybody would be doing it and it wouldn't be innovative.